Ayo hey friendos, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be trying out the new Hourglass Foundation. This is the brand new Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I'm gonna show it with primer, without primer, and in natural light. And if you guys wanna sit down with me for the rest of the video, you'll hear some of my thoughts and insights on other Hourglass products. And of course, if you enjoy the Hourglass brand, then friendo, please subscribe. I do talk about it quite a bit here on my channel, and I would love to have you as a friendo. Okay, without further ado, let's get into this review. Guys, just stay tuned. So guys, if you liked the look that you saw when I first came on camera today, well then you can stick around to the very end of course, we're gonna do the foundation first, but after the foundation review is done, of course, I'm going to need to finish off my look and I'll do that on camera for you guys. Some of those finishing touches, of course, will be Hourglass and some will be some lesser known brands. Either way, it's sure to be a good time, so let's talk about this foundation. So I picked this up from Sephora. Of course, you can also pick it up from the Hourglass site. This is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. It was $58, I believe. So this was $58, you, you get one fluid ounce of product let's it has a very beautiful frosted glass packaging with a dark chocolate metal cap i can't wait to try this on so i've always adored the packaging on hourglass i just think that it's so luxe so heavy and so pretty now i'm going to slip into a little bit of controversy here and tell you that Hourglass just doesn't have the best track record when it comes to foundations like they're all pretty good well, <laughs> a lot of people hate them, just being honest. Especially this one, the Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. Now, personally, this is a favorite of mine. It's not the easiest to apply. It takes a little bit of maintenance, but as far as finishes are concerned, I don't have anything that has a finish like this in my entire foundation collection. I consider her to be just a high maintenance girlfriend. Like she needs a little extra work, but she's worth it. You guys know. I'm sure some of you guys can find that relatable. Okay, so back to this foundation. Let's try it on. So guys, on an everyday basis, I do put down primer and I also powder my face. I'm an oily skin girl with pores. And although the lighting in here is very forgiving, what I will do is I will take a trip outdoors so we all can see for ourselves what the makeup looks like in natural lighting. So what I'm gonna start out by doing is doing half of my face with primer, I'm going to do the Mineral Veil Primer that is from Hourglass. I'm gonna do that on half of my face. The other half, I'm not gonna use primer. We'll go outside, take a look. Then we'll come back inside, I'll powder up. We'll go back outside and see it again in the natural light. And friendos, if you have pores, this is a very nice blurring primer. Highly, highly recommend. So some people were saying that the foundation shades were hard to identify online. Personally, I already know that I like the shade Bisque. So on Sephora, it showed that this shade right here, shade number four, yeah, shade number four would be my match, which is a light warm. And now friendos, our look is complete and we're ready to take on the day. Okay, just kidding. So guys, on first impressions, this side looks almost perfect. It looks very skin-like. This side, however, I feel like I need more coverage. I have a little bit of hyperpigmentation, a little bit of scarring over here. I can definitely see that peeking through. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the side where I didn't prime. So guys, before I step outdoors, what I want to do is read off what the claims are for this foundation. Give it a chance to set down while we chat. 
So this claims to be a weightless liquid foundation that delivers buildable medium coverage with a light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours. Supposed to be a medium coverage, natural finish, and of course liquid. Inspired by the iconic ambient lighting collection, this foundation is infused with blurring spheres to minimize the look of imperfections for skin that looks smooth, even, and glowing. The transfer resistant formula is also resistant to humidity and sweat for flawless looking coverage that stays in place. We'll be the judge of that. All right, I guess it's set. Let's go outside. So friendos, this is the look in the light of day. I do feel like it's enhanced my forehead wrinkle. Forehead wrinkle has gotten bad though because I haven't gone and gotten my Botox, so. But yeah, as far as this side to this one, now that I've reapplied, I can't really tell a difference. I just realized I didn't have a microphone with me outdoors, so. So what I was saying is I didn't think that the foundation so far has done anything to really hide this awful forehead wrinkle that I have going on. Matter of fact, I do think that it looks enhanced. I think it looks worse. I can't really tell a difference between this side of my face and this one outside in the natural light. Looking here in my studio and looking in my mirror, I can see a difference though. This side definitely looks more smooth and then this one I can detect a little bit more texture. I also thought that my forehead wrinkle looked worse on this side than on this one. Okay, time to powder up again. I'm going in with the Pat McGrath Labs powder today. This is in the shade Light One. Also so far, I feel like the coverage is definitely a true medium. Do you know what? I haven't put on, I'm neglected to put on my concealer, so I'm glad I haven't set up here yet. Let me get on that. So I'm going in with the Dominique Cosmetics Wide Awake Concealer. This is in the shade Oat Milk. Okay, so now that the powder is down and I have my concealer on, let's step back outside and see how she looks. Be right back. So guys, I am very happy to report that after putting on the setting powder from Pat McGrath Labs, Everything looks more blurred and more perfected. I like the look of the foundation a thousand times more. So I think if you do have a finely milled blurring powder of your own, you could put this down over top of the foundation. Your look would be very lightweight, youthful, and just natural. Also, the longer that this sits on my face, I feel like the more evident it is which side I put primer down on and which side I didn't. Like my pores definitely are looking worse on this side than this one. I've been sitting here quite a while. I know it probably feels like a few minutes, but guys, I had a really rough night last night. I got food poisoning, so if I seem a little wonky and off today, that's what happened. So I keep having to pause and collect my thoughts. You guys don't wanna know that. Okay, we're moving on. So I'm gonna go in with the Dim Infusion Lighting Blush. This, of course, is from Hourglass as well. One of the most beautiful, one of my most favorite blush formulas of all time. It's hard to go in too heavy and everything just looks so naturally radiant. A lot of times if a blush is too radiant, it can come off as more of a blush light. This particular formula in the Hourglass collection just looks like beautiful radiant skin. It's not highlighty. Also, if you're someone <laughs> if you're someone who's afraid of a highlighter and you just want some radiance and glow, this is a good option if you don't want to highlight. See there guys, doesn't that look lovely? Just that nice little flush of color. Next from the Universe Unlocked palette that came out last year, I'm going to dip into the bronzer in there. And it really does pair well with that Dim Infusion blush. They just, they seem like a very cohesive formulation with the bronzer being just a tad bit more matte. And I mean, just a tad. And to contour my hideous jawline, I'm going to use an old, embarrassing BH Cosmetics powder palette 
just to finish everything up. I'm not going to show it on camera. You can't get them anymore. They're old. It looks like crap. So I'm just going to do this really quick off camera and I'll be back to you. So now guys from Ciate, we have this everyday vacay palette. I told you guys that I was going to try this out on my channel and then I just never got around to it. This did come in an Allure beauty box. So I figured what the hey, we'll do it today very quickly because I need to get out the door. So I'm going to start out by going in with this light taupe shade that we see right here. Oh, that is way more pigmented than what I was expecting you guys. Oh my goodness. Then I'm going in with the reddish burgundy shade down here. I'm going to go in with the grayish mauve shade that we see right here. Okay, so now we're gonna take the most sparkly shade in the palette down here. I always like to show you guys this once without spray and then with spray. So that's without spray. This looks really nice. Then with spray. All right, guys, I'm going to go do liner and lashes off camera and I'll be right back to you. So friendos, I have to tell you, I am super impressed with the Ciate palette. Was not expecting that at all. It looked super cheapy, but wow. To be honest, this is a somewhat similar color story to the nude prism palette, in my opinion, and this performed so much better. Now, this palette is made in Korea. Annie's was made in China. Not trying to harp on that too much, but but the labs definitely matter. Also, the foundation that we use today is also from Korea, I believe. Yes, made in Korea. So while this is somewhat of a more tame, boring color story, I think this look is exceptionally flattering. If I tried this out and the longevity's there, I would do this as wedding makeup, no joke. We have the Hourglass Velvet Story in the shade Hint. Let me go ahead and line my lips and then we'll put this on. All right, guys, this is our finished look. Overall, I'm pretty happy with everything. I can't say that I think this foundation is going to be a favorite of mine. However, it's still really good medium coverage. I also wanna try working with it a little more to see if there's anything that I can do to perfect it all the more. I will say though, this paired with the Pat McGrath Labs powder. It's looking pretty snatched. I did gab on about how much I love the bronzers and the blushes from Hourglass. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with more of that. If you're wondering why I didn't use an Hourglass mascara, it's because I don't really like them. I haven't found a formulation for me that has really worked. I'm hoping in the future they'll come out with more and I'll be happy to try those and see how they do. As far as the Velvet Story lipstick is concerned, I really like this. It's very comfortable. It is not going to be a matte lipstick or something that dries down all the way, but it does kind of have that plushy liquid lip look and feel to it. So if you like the Makeup by Mario Cozy Lip Cream like I do, I love it. I have to move it off my desk so I won't use it all the time. You'd probably like the Velvet Story as well. They're very similar in formulation. And friendos, I suppose that concludes our video for today. I really appreciate you all watching to the end and spending your time here with me. Thank you for all your love. Thank you for your likes, your comments. Let me know if you plan to pick up this foundation or if you already have. What's your favorite Hourglass products? I always love to hear from you guys. Please don't hesitate to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And of course, I hope that you'll subscribe if you have not done so already, because if not, We'll both have to live in the sorrow of never knowing what could have been. Okay, guys, have a phenomenal rest of your day. Bye.